This is Story Recapped. Today I'm gonna explain a drama sci-fi film called Proximity. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 1979, lumberjacks in Wrangell, Alaska prepare to return to town after harvesting trees from the forest. As Carl Meisner follows another vehicle, his radio starts malfunctioning, so he searches for a good reception while he drives. Suddenly, the truck in front of him gets lifted into the air and lands upside down. While Carl attempts to help the driver, a UFO appears in the sky. He tries to flee, but the ship's beams capture him and take him into the flying saucer. At present, Isaac Cypress goes to work at the NASA Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, California. As soon as he arrives at the office, his co-worker Beck tells him that it's his turn to search for an audio signal. Isaac immediately traces a signal in front of Pluto, but Beck claims that it wasn't the signal that he sent. Beck asserts that it's the signal they always trace back to Canada, but he's puzzled because there are no grounded satellites there. Their co-worker Greta asks them what they're doing, so Beck explains that they're playing a game where Isaac tries to find the audio files he sends through NASA's satellites. That night, Isaac comes across another signal and tries to locate its source, but their systems indicate it's from an unknown origin. After work, Isaac visits his therapy therapist to talk about his past trauma. Isaac notes that he's not ready to move on, so the therapist advises him to create a video diary to express his feelings and clear his mind. Isaac follows the therapist's advice and starts recording his thoughts daily. One day, he goes on a hike with his camera to record his diary in the mountains. Isaac suddenly sees a meteorite crashing toward Earth, so he uses the camera to capture its descent. Soon, Isaac hears the police arriving, so he hides in the bushes. When Isaac runs to the woods, he sees a flying saucer above him. He records the UFO with his camera for a moment, but it suddenly vanishes. As he puts his camera down, he senses someone watching him. He sees a gray alien when he turns around, so he secretly turns on his camera to record the strange being. As soon as the alien walks away, Isaac runs in the opposite direction. However, he loses consciousness when a beam of light flashes in front of him. Isaac wakes up on a hilltop near the sea three days later, not knowing where he is. He immediately checks his camera and sees the footage of the gray alien. A moment later, the recording shows his feet rising from the ground as if he's being lifted into the air. When Isaac gets home, he sees his TV vanishing into thin air. His hand seemingly goes through a portal when he puts it over the table where the TV used to be. After the TV reappears, he focuses on his camera. It also vanishes, but the object reappears after he concentrates. Isaac goes to the doctor the next day and finds out that he has a fractured arm. The doctor is perplexed because the fracture is perfectly straight and thin, unlike normal fractures. The doctor is even more fascinated because there's no sign of scar tissue on his skin so he tells Isaac that he'll continue reviewing his x-rays. When Isaac goes to work, he tries showing Beck that he can make objects disappear. Isaac manages to make a cup vanish, but the object never disappears from Beck's point of view. Isaac decides to show Beck the footage of the gray alien and explains that it happened when he went hiking on Saturday. Isaac thinks that only one day has passed, but Beck reveals that Isaac has been gone from work the whole week. Moments later, Greta arrives and informs Beck that they have analyzed the soil samples from the meteorite crash site, but there's no sign that it even landed there. She notes that the best evidence they have is footage from someone's cell phone. Greta discloses that it was uploaded to the website of Science Magazine and quickly garnered a million views, so Isaac decides to post his video on the same website. The local TV station, KFLA, soon discovers Isaac's video and contacts him to schedule an interview. When Isaac checks his video on the website, he discovers that it has been viewed more than 800,000 times. His mailbox shows numerous emails asking him for an interview. In the comments section of the video, he he sees a few people who believe that the video is real, but others dismiss it as fake. On his way to work, he receives more calls asking him for an interview. Soon, Isaac goes to KFLA to tell his alien abduction story. As he narrates what happened during his hike, Christine, the host, expresses her skepticism about the footage, because she thinks it was convenient that he had his camera with him that day. Isaac explains that he was documenting himself as part of his therapy. Christine points out that he has a degree in mathematics and works as a computer engineer near, so she asks him if he could have faked the video. Isaac insists that the video is real and the abduction really happened. Over the next few days, more media
media outlets dismiss the footage as a hoax, and a man even claims that he helped Isaac create the video. Isaac begins searching the internet for people who had a similar abduction experience. After finding someone who claims to have the same arm fracture, Isaac immediately arranges a meeting. The next day, Isaac goes to a diner and meets with a woman named Sarah. Isaac asks Sarah about her experience, but she is reluctant to tell him anything. Isaac shows Sarah the video and tells her that he reached out to her because he realized that it's hard to convince people that the aliens really abducted him. He then shows her several examples of UFOs and Renaissance art and tells her about unexplained signals from outer space. Isaac also notes that astronauts have also taken photographs of UFOs during space flights. Sarah asks him if he heard about the alien abduction case in Alaska in 1979. She finds the incident remarkable because all witnesses went through lie detector tests and passed. She notes that the abductee, Carl, went missing after he came out with his story. Before parting ways, Isaac gives Sarah his phone number to keep in touch. Days later, Sarah contacts Isaac to tell him more about the abduction in 1979 and discloses that the abductee was Carl Meisner. Isaac immediately looks up the name on the internet, but he can't find anything. Isaac decides to create copies of his video and looks up the addresses of numerous websites about alien encounters. While he's dropping the tapes into the mailbox, a man named Keith Oberman sees him having difficulty doing it, so he offers to help. Keith soon recognizes him from the news and notes that the media is not treating him fairly. He offers to let Isaac explain his side of the story through his blog and gives him a card with its contact number and office address. When Isaac visits the office, Keith advises him to go through a lie detector test to convince the people he's telling the truth. Isaac agrees, and Keith immediately installs the equipment on his laptop to begin the test. After a few test questions, Keith asks him if he has ever run away from home. Isaac responds affirmatively and tries to explain, but Keith reminds him that he can only answer with yes or no. Keith asks a few questions about the incident and the video before inquiring if Isaac had an encounter with extraterrestrials. When Isaac answers yes, Keith leaves the office and promises to return. Moments later, two men in black enter the room and grab Isaac. When they reach the hallway, Isaac attempts to flee, but one of the men shoots him with a ray gun. Isaac regains consciousness while androids are carrying him in a corridor. The androids take him to a windowless room with white walls and a ceiling. After the robots strap him to a chair, he sees two more androids taking Sarah into another room. Soon, Keith appears on the TV and tells Isaac that his real name is Agent Graves. He asserts that Isaac has valuable information to help society, and asks him to be compliant as they perform tests on him. After determining that Isaac has a tracker in his arm, they test him to determine if he has gained special abilities after the abduction. When Isaac fails to demonstrate any ability, Graves asks him what he knows about Carl. Isaac claims that he doesn't know Carl, so Graves threatens him. Graves continues asking him about Carl, and remarks that they won't find him by wandering around British Columbia aimlessly. Isaac breaks free from the straps, so the androids enter the room to subdue him again. As soon as the androids approach, Isaac hits them with a pole, damaging the robot severely. After fleeing from his cell, he finds Sarah in another room, so he uses his ability to open the secure door and helps her break free. As they find their way out of the facility, they encounter two more androids, so Isaac runs back to his room to grab a weapon from the damaged robots to fire back at their pursuers. The pair soon come across a locked door, so Isaac concentrates hard to unlock it. Isaac and Sarah eventually escape through the door before the androids androids reach them. When they get out of the facility, the two find themselves in an unfamiliar forest, but a label on a cow cart hints that they're in Costa Rica. Graves instructs his robots to track the pair, hoping that they will lead them to Carl. Isaac and Sarah stop by a cafe and ask where they can access the internet, so the waitress tells them to find a man named Zed at a restaurant about two kilometers away. The pair eventually reaches the restaurant and gets in touch with Zed. However, they see androids arriving, so they leave the premises immediately. On their way to Zed's hideout, out, Zed tells them that the androids are from the International Space Research Program, an agency that works for the UN. He discloses that they have underground facilities all over the forest, but not a lot of people know about them. Upon reaching Zed's place, Isaac mentions that they need to find Carl Meisner. As Zed sets up his computer, Sarah confesses that she knew about Isaac before they met at the diner because she saw him on the news. Sarah reveals that she was abducted while staying at her aunt's cabin in the mountains. She recounts that she heard a noise outside the cabin that night when her aunt and uncle were away. She saw something strange in the sky, but she didn't make too much of it and went back to sleep. Sarah discloses that she felt different when she woke up at 2 in the morning. When her aunt and uncle saw her the following day, they told her that she had been missing for two days. Sarah notes that she doesn't remember anything, 
but she researched alien abductions after recalling the strange object in the sky. She tried to tell other people about her experience, but they thought she was crazy. Soon, Zed tells Isaac that he can't find anything on Carl. Isaac recalls Graves mentioning British Columbia during the interrogation, and remembers the audio signal that Beck traced to Canada. Upon gaining access to one of the JPL satellites, they trace the audio signal to an isolated cabin in Canada. The three contact Carl through video chat, but he immediately disconnects the call. When they call once again, Isaac immediately tells him about his alien abduction and encounter with the ISRP. Isaac notes that he might have been abducted because he came across a mysterious signal the same night he found Carl's signal. When they send data from the mysterious signal to Carl, he runs it through his translator and learns that the aliens intend to visit the cabin in five days. Carl advises the trio to lay low and stay off the grid before disconnecting the call. Isaac convinces Sarah to go with him to find Carl's cabin, noting that he is the only one who can help them. Zed decides to join them and helps them find transportation to British Columbia. When they reach British Columbia, they ride a train that will lead them to the town closest to Carl's cabin. During the train ride, Zed's computer detects the presence of two androids. The androids soon board the train, so Zed gives them masks to confuse the robot's facial recognition system. The androids fail to recognize them, but one of the robots gets suspicious of Isaac and tries to shoot him. Fortunately, Isaac manages to dodge his rays. The three climb to the roof, so one of the androids follows them. When the pursuing robot falls off the train, the remaining android immediately heads to the door to find a way to the roof. However, Zed waits for the android by the door and kicks it off the train. Upon reaching the train station, the trio hitches another ride to reach Carl's cabin. When they get to the cabin, Carl comes out with a shotgun, so Isaac immediately explains that he's the one who passed along the data from the signal. Carl deduces that they still have track in their bodies, so he deactivates them and discloses that the aliens installed them. Carl tells them they're early because the alien's scheduled visit is still two days away. When they get inside the house, Carl explains that he started buying equipment to contact the aliens after escaping from ISRP. He notes that he picked up mysterious signals over the years and translated them after decoding them to audio. In one of the old translated messages, an alien remarks that its ship has reached Earth's orbit and has detected humans on the planet. Sarah and Isaac spend the next day talking about their abduction and exploring the forest. When they get home, Carl warns Isaac that there's no guarantee for their safety when the aliens come. As Sarah tries to sleep, Isaac tells her that he's glad to meet someone who understands what happened to him. The following day, the group spends most of their time waiting for the aliens to arrive. When Isaac feels the ground shaking, he approaches Carl to ask if he felt the quake as well. Carl tells him that the aliens are close, so Isaac heads to the forest. Soon, a gray alien appears behind him, so he asks what it wants. That night, the aliens join them in the cabin to answer all their questions. When Isaac asks them why they abducted people, one of the aliens explains that they've already overcome all challenges in medicine and technology on their planet, so they visit other places in search of something beyond their understanding. The alien claims that they study humans because they have a mysterious aura within them. The alien tells them that they want to know about a particular human, and projects images of Jesus Christ in the minds of Sarah and Isaac. When Isaac asks why they're looking for him, the alien stresses that he is a link to the universe's origin and has a strong amount of the aura they found in humans. Sarah asks them why their arms hurt, so the alien uses a device to sever her arm and take the tracker that they installed. After reattaching Sarah's arm, the alien proceeds to take off the tracker inside Isaac. During the procedure, Carl's security system suddenly alert them to the arrival of intruders. When Carl investigates, he discovers that they're surrounded by ISRP agents. Soon, Graves instructs Carl to come out of the cabin and asks him to reveal what happened to Ronald Graves. Carl soon comes out and explains that he doesn't know what happened to his father. Graves refuses to believe Carl and instructs his agents to shoot him. When Sarah comes out, Graves orders his agents to shoot her as well. After reattaching Isaac's arm, the alien instructs him to focus on his senses to use his ability. When the aliens vanish, Isaac goes outside as the agents are firing at the house. Upon reaching the doorstep, Isaac vanishes with Sarah and Carl, taking them into a parallel dimension. Afterward, he comes back for Zed, who is busy trying to save Carl's equipment. Graves soon instructs his agents to stop shooting upon realizing that the group has disappeared. The aliens soon return to revive Sarah and Carl. 
Afterward, the group walks past Graves and his agents to go to the woods, but they seem invisible to the agents. Moments later, Graves sees the alien ship rising into the sky before vanishing without a trace. After six months, Sarah and Isaac fall in love and move to Costa Rica, while Zed and Carl join forces to launch a new tech intelligence agency called Zuma. Isaac continues recording his video diary, but he's not interested in showing any of them to the public. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.